some model kit stuff. Um, and this is the first of two videos looking at the newly released Trumpeter 1200 scale Sean Horse model kit. So in this first video we'll have a look at what's in the box uh, and, and what's included and in the second video we'll then compare that to um, an anatomy of the ship book on the subject and see what we might need to change from a, a scrap, uh, scratch build point of view. If you've purchased a, a Trumpeter 1200 scale ship before then um, this is all going to be fairly familiar, it's fairly standard fare. Um, so uh, what we've got is at the top we've got one long white box which will have the hull in and then we've got three smaller boxes which will have all the ship's parts, uh, instruction manual and uh, a colour page uh, for the painting instructions. Let's take a so closer Let's look at the paint guide first. Um, we'll need to check our references to see how accurate that is. Trumpeter do have a reputation for making the odd error. Um, the paint reference there lists the colours uh, and it's shouting out Mr Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, Humber. But what it does give you is um, some colours which only one of them shouts out um, an RLM uh, code. So we'd need to check those paint colours were actually accurate. The instructions, we start with the parts list which is typical for Trumpeter. And then we start with the hull and the deck. So it's actually a two piece deck. That line there will roughly be where the uh, water break is, I would guess, uh, hopefully. Um, looks like there's some drilling instructions needed for the for the deck. It says make holes but doesn't tell you what diameter is there so we'll have to work that out. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm pleased to see that they've changed their um, construction process and the way they lay it out. So it used to be in some of their first one 200 scale kits Arizona, Bismarck certainly, where they'd have you build lots of sub-assemblies and then have one step where you assembled all those parts. And I, I didn't like that because it meant that you had built up parts sometimes hanging around for months. So I never worked like that anyway. But what they've done now in the instructions is they're having you fit parts together um, as you need them, which I think is a, a much better way forward. And there's the funnel, it's made up of several sections. Got some photo etch on it. Ship's hanger. So yeah, um, seems to be quite a logical um, build steps. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed is it's shouting out um, railing positions as you go. Um, which is nice because um, previous kits and I think about the, the Bismarck particularly doesn't reference ra railing positions whatsoever so they're clearly learning from their feedback which is good so taking a look at the hull it's um, a single piece hull um, which is slide bolded um, we can see if we get a bit closer here we can see the slide moulding um, seems. Um, what I would say is if you're going to build this straight out the box there's some nice detail here with um, hand rungs uh, um, on there but it's a fairly featureless hull. Now obviously we'll look at this more closely in part two. Um, there's no evidence of a decausing cable. I think German ships pretty much had them all under the water line, under the boot line, so um, it'll be interesting to see um, how accurate this is when the time comes. What I have noticed is, and you perhaps pick it up here, there is some pretty heavy sink on it. So all of these points here, these the fixing points for the um, struts that give the outer hull some stability, there is some pretty nasty sink that needs to be filled. Don't know whether there should be any um, 
sea chest grills in that. I, I, I don't see any evidence that they're, they haven't made any um, evidence of them being there. Um, that anchor chain hole also looks a little bit incorrect in place, but I might be wrong. But yeah, okay, so one good solid masking. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna need some filling, it's gonna need some work. Um, other than the sink, I don't see any other issues with it. So taking a look at the large section of deck. Okay, so as plastic deck goes, that's as good as any. Uh, it's not accurate, obviously. Um, plastic decks tend not to be. Um, but yeah, there's some, I'm guessing that's anchor chain uh, details. There are some holes in there, but as we've already seen in the instructions, you are required to drill more. Location points for the superstructure. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So. We've got some deck hatches here. Now on the Arizona and on the Bismarck, they're definitely open, but these have been molded shut, so you don't have an option for having those open. So I'm a bit disappointed on that. Um, and then let's just remove that. Ah, and then we've got a molded in breakwater. Now I've no doubt that will get replaced by the aftermarket boys at some point, so you will probably be hacking that off. Okay, so that's the main deck. Let's have a look at the smaller parts. So box A um, is absolutely rammed with sprues. Let's go deep dive into them and see what we've got. So sprue A seems to contain mainly parts for um, the funnel, some trunking. I think that might be um, the base of the funnel there. And then we've got the secondary brake waters there. But one thing that stands out is, is look at these splinter shields here. The finesse of the moulding has absolutely improved since their first kits. If you think about Arizona and, um, and Bismarck, the, the splinter shields on that are much heavier. Um, and some nice detailing inside, whereas they might have been left blank previously. You know, I mean, look at that, that's, that's really quite nice. Um, and there's some nice cabling, is that possibly? depicted on there. Um, the scuttles have the eyebrows, the, the water uh, drains above them, so drilled out they should look quite nice. There's some moulded on ladders or hand rungs there. And some vents. So that's sprue A. Uh, this is sprue U. And you can see we've got uh, the funnel parts there, and there's quite some, quite a lot of nice detail on there. We've got some trunking, um, some pipe work, uh, ventilation, um, and it's all very crisply moulded in. This is the forward control tower uh, platforms and main body. Sprue C is the um, display stand. Oh, actually, no, that might be. Yeah, sorry, it's not the display stand at all. Those are the um, supports, I think, for inside the hull. Fairly sure of that. Uh, and then you've got a nameplate here, and I'm pleased to say it just says the name of the ship. It's not got the scale and the and the manufacturer's name on it, which um, you know can detract from the display, in my opinion. So that's quite nice. Okay, the next item out of the box is this um, large piece of uh, superstructure um, which comprises of the, the, the lower superstructure and, and the deck above it. Um, so the deck appears to be mainly wood planked and then this area I'm guessing is steel decked and I'm not sure if we can pick it up on the camera but it is textured. Can you see the cross hatching? And then where we've got um, armament I'm guessing there is a, a different format for the steel deck and then there's some more planking there so how accurate this is we, we, we'll go back and check 
Um, but yeah, that's quite nice. And again, I'm, I'm impressed with the finesse of the splinter shields. And um, they are actually tapered when you look at them closely. End on, you can see that they, they taper the top millimeter or so. Uh, but the overall effect is really pleasing, looks really good. Um, when we look at the, the side elevation, um, again, all the detail is very nice and crisp. Um, we need to check whether the placements are right. But the rectangular uh, windows, they're all closed. So we might need to be removing those um, if you're wanting to open them up. We'll have to see. But we've got quite a nice level of detail there. We've got cabling runs, which is nice to see. This trunk in here, you know, in, in previous... Um, kits that would have been separate so what we're, what we're starting to see is trumpeter cutting corners a little bit but if, as long as it's not affected the quality of the build I, I don't have a big issue with that other than we're paying more and possibly getting less I don't know these kits keep going up in price every time they're released so we've got yeah got some nice end detail there and then on the other side uh, I don't think it's mirrored exactly the same on each side, but it's the same uh, level of detail, obviously. So next out is sprue A, uh, and as you can see, we've got another fairly large piece of, of deck area, um, which is planked. Funnel cap, or part of it. Not quite sure what those are, they look like curved bulkheads. Um, then we've got some parts for the, the hull, the propeller bits. Um, the rudders, which have got some nice detail on them. Uh, some form of machine parts. There's a little platform here, I'm guessing that goes with the mast. And um, it has a very nice fine texture on it. There we go, diamond plate texture which is nice but this is um, the jack staff here this is the um, one for the stern that's very nicely um, very nicely done also very delicate and I'll be interested to see how easy it is to get that out without causing damage to it and clean it up Um, so this was wrapped in foam to protect it, and I'll rewrap that now. So next out is sprue R. Now there's four of these, two bags of two. Um, it's all dealing with secondary armament, I think. Uh, what we can see here, if I go in a bit closer, there's quite a considerable amount of flash on some of the, the gun parts there. You can see around the, the muzzle there and the breech there. Um, so that's a bit surprising given the newness of the kit. Um, it could be that this is um, lifted out of another um, of their kits, maybe even the trumpet, uh, the Bismarck kit, because there will be a lot of uh, common parts uh, as it's a German ship, so things like searchlights and things like that, they will be um, the same fitting on Bismarck as they were on Tirpitz or Scharnhurst or, or any of the German ships. Um, so yeah, quite interesting, there's quite a bit of flash on that. Um, I'm only speculating that these are the same parts, I might be totally wrong. But yeah, all four of them are the same um, in terms of the flash. Um, having said that, the detail is nice. Um, you're probably going to want to swap out those barrels for brass, I would imagine. Yeah, I see quite a lot of flash on the trunk in there, so surprising amount of flash on sprue R. So next out is Sprue X. There's two of these. These were both entirely wrapped in, in foam. Um, and we're dealing with, well, we've got ship's boats, uh, and the cranes, torpedo tubes. They're a highlight. The uh, detail on them is quite exquisite. And really nice touch is the inclusion of some torpedoes there. So that'll give some real colour um, to the ship because uh, you know nice brass heads and what have you that'll look really quite nice some delicate parts there I'm guessing for the ship's boats uh, and then we have life rafts 
and uh, belt chocks, some davits. I'll flip that over. They're fairly nicely detailed, maybe slightly overdone. Wouldn't surprise me if there were some resin replacements came out for those, but they do look nice. Um, light machine guns. You can see in the uh, dinghy there, you can just about see some planking detail. So that's nicely done. Some quite heavy injection marks inside that, but probably won't see that when it's on, possibly. It's quite hard to get rid of those from inside the boat. Um, yeah, okay, just interested to see. Something caught my eye as I flipped it over. Uh, one of the sh one of the ship's boats. Where was it? Uh, there we go. So the little the little dinghy there actually has the chocks already moulded on, which I'm not sure that I like. No doubt the aftermarket boys will sort that for us. The last sprue out of box A is sprue B, which has the armoured control towers on it. There's the catapult there um, and some other fine detail pipe work and, and, and the like. The bit I'm really pleased to see, however, is that. So that goes right on the stern and forms a lip on the stern of the ship. It overhangs the, the stern uh, and then that jack staff that we saw earlier will sit around it. Um, and they totally miss that off the Bismarck and it's a very prominent feature on all German ships. So it's really nice to see that, yeah. No issues there with flash or anything like that. All nice and crisp, lovely. So that's look, is box A, let's take a look at box B. Okay, so first out of box B is um, sprue B. Oh, sorry, sprue E. Need to put my glasses on. Um, there's four of these, two in each bag, um, foam wrapped in the centre and what we've got here is, I know I said secondary armament before, I meant anti-aircraft guns. You've got more anti-aircraft guns and you've got the secondary armament and I think those are single barrel guns as well. Um, we've got the floats there, life, life floats. Machine guns and various other uh, ready use lockers. Yeah, it looks nice. The barrels are rifled out as well, which is nice. Yeah, all looks good. Next out is sprue D, which primarily has the uh, primary armament on it. There's three of these in the, in the one bag. Uh, we've got the propeller there and the ship's boats which are all perfectly good for um, straight out of the box use. Obviously some limitations to plastic moulding but the detail is nice, no flash and these look like the searchlights and the searchlight frames. All very nice indeed. So the last plastic sprues out of this box are the two Arado 196 float planes. Um, the detail of these for the scale is actually really quite nice. There's um, wing panel lines there and there's texture on the on the floats um, and I like the fact that um, they've not done it in the clear plastic that they, they sometimes do because um, that, that can be a bit difficult to work with but um, what is a bit disappointing is that the, your only option is fixed wing so if you're going to want to depict this on the crane or on the catapult with the wings folded or coming out of the, the hangar you're going to have to do a little bit of butchery to make that happen um, but all the mouldings are nice and crisp um, so yeah um, it's quite a good um, generic aircraft Next out of the box is a little bag which contains anchor chain and the two um, propeller shafts. Um, and I have to be honest, the anchor chain looks like it's possibly a little under scale. Um, perhaps have a, a closer look at that. It's not stud chain, um, obviously you wouldn't expect it to be really. Um, but um, the, the link shape is nice and correct, so yeah, not too bad. Our box B contains all the etch frets. So, 
I think we've worked out those six or seven of those so let's have a, a look at those in a bit more detail. So this is the first bag, it's got two etch frets in which are for the aircraft. So you've got the cockpit frame there which you'd need to glaze and then you've got some support struts there that, that are for the um, floats. So fairly standard affair. So this is etch set C. Um, it clearly has um, ladders and parts for the armament. Those are the front faces of the um, searchlights there. Um, these are parts that go around the bottom of the um, armament. Propellers, I'm guessing, for the ship's boats. A little bit of railing, not quite sure what they are. Um, and are they anchors maybe for the ship's boats? And those are seats for um, the AA guns, a couple of watertight doors. And then if we flip it over, uh, we're on sprue D. Um, so that's got some structure there for the funnel cap, some more railings quite possibly funnel related. I know that is funnel related. Some ladders, some gangways. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if most of that was all related to the funnel construction. Uh, that is the catapult frame for the aircraft. So um, if you're familiar with trumpeter etch, it's the same, it's fairly thick. Um, etch sometimes can be a little bit soft I find. So fret E is all railings, trumpeters standard generic stock railings that you have to cut to, to length and then on the other side we have fret G which has more railings and some deck parts, uh, gangways with ladders, not quite sure what that is, but it's got a ladder on it. Various shape railings, I'm guessing those are for the masts. Not quite sure what that is either. That's definitely a yard arm uh, with the signal flag uh, points. Uh, Radar, yeah, some nice fine detail on there. You can see tread plate pattern on that platform, um, and these ladders are reliefed so that they stand away from the bulkhead as, as they would do, so that's all very nice. And then um, lastly, we have two frets that are the same again. I need to check whether that's right. I'm not sure that it is. And they both say F, so I've got no A or B, which is interesting. Um, so we've got radar discs, uh, parts I'm guessing for the cranes. Um, that's for the um, gangway ladders that go out on the outside of the hull, cable reels. Um, more armament seats and shaped railing. All fairly standard photo etch stuff, as you can see, two of those. So I'm going to check that's correct. But that's it for the photo etch as far well, certainly for this box. Just to confirm that, just to confirm that point we were making, um, it is correct, there is no A and B photo etch frets, which is a little odd, but there you go. So they've started with C, um, there should be two of those Fs. Um, so yeah, that all looks like it's correct. And the last item out of um, box B is the decal sheet. I'm always a little bit underwhelmed by trumpeters ship decals. When you consider the size of decals you can produce for, let's say, uh, Airfix produced for a 172 aircraft, you can get some really tiny decals and, and yet we're getting just some generic um, decals. So we've got flags, two options, fluttering in the wind or, or straight. We've got um, 
the deck marking for the aerial recognition so you put that on top of that and then that on top of that and you then put those lines in and, and you've got six layers of decals to make a, a swastika. sticker now it's going to be very difficult to get all that to sit nicely and not look like you've got a stack of stuff piled up so i'm not a great fan of that i, I certainly would be masking that anyway I, I wouldn't want to use that once you've settled it down it, it's going to distort a little bit anyway um, and then you've got a matte coat and stuff because it's quite shiny as it, as it is now um, which isn't true to form um, you've got some markings for the aircraft um, these things you can turn into swastikas stickers by cutting bits out um, and then I'm guessing they're also for the for the um, aircraft as well but the ship would have had all sorts of warning signs operation signs um, do not enter danger so on and so forth dotted all around it um, and they could certainly capture quite a few of those um, and, and they're not doing that uh, so I think it's a little bit a little bit lax I, I'm not sure that I would actually use any of these I, I would certainly invest in some aftermarket decals once they're available so finally um, box C um, so we'll start by taking this out which is just a spacer and that's what we're getting in box C so let's have a look and deep dive into this first out of um, box C is screw S which contains these two structure parts which I think are for the forward superstructure which contains the command tower um, very nicely done no ejection marks to clean up again the splinter shields are really finely moulded which is nice to see um, we've got a combination of deck and steel deck relief planked and steel I should say um, we've got some ship's doors there. Cabling's depicted, which is nice to see. Okay, that's S. Next sprue out of the box uh, is sprue F. There's two of these, um, and it primarily centres around the Admiral's launch there. Um, we've got a bit of uh, more crane structure in these cradles which um, all go around the, the main mast area no issues with um, flash or anything that I can see and again the ship's, ship's boats nicely rendered as it, it can be with the limitations of uh, plastic moulding Yeah, some fine detail on some of these parts. Uh, signal lamp there, I mean, that's a very nice, clearly, clearly done part. Yeah. The next sprue out of box C is sprue W, which which um, contains the parts for the masts, and um, yeah, everything's nice and clear in terms of the, the moulding nice and crisp. Some of this detail is very fine indeed. Some of the yards are very fine indeed. So much so that this one, even though this sprue was double wrapped in foam, has broken away, you can see. And in fact, that is so thin that it's going to be very problematic to rig it. Even with EZ line, I think... As um, soon as that's under tension, it has, has a high chance of, of bending. So you're going to want to replace those with brass um, brass wire, I think. Um, and it's going to be quite problematic, actually, to remove and clean up some of these parts. Um, but um, it's very nicely done. They've managed to get it to scale as much as they can, which is, which is a nice achievement. I have no doubt that when... Pontos or Pontos or MK1 catch up with it. That's one of the things they'll do is replace all this with brass, which is what's needed really. However, um, from the kit point of view, very nicely done. Next item out um, is the um, bow deck forward of the breakwater. Um, they have correctly done the chain plates in decking, which is nice to see. Um, the shape all looks correct. Um, 
I'm not sure I didn't see anything as we went through the parts for the um, anchor retainers to stop the anchors bouncing around in the, in the um, pitching of the sea. Um, there you go. Nicely moulded. Um, those two bits, they'll be quite delicate. Perhaps would have liked them to have been separate bits. Um, they probably look a bit heavy. Uh, I'm no doubt that they would be replaced with etch by anybody making an etch set for this. Uh, next item is um, more of the forward superstructure, uh, which in, uh, includes the barbette for main gun B. Um, what's there is nicely done. I just wonder what's missing from there. The, these at this scale. You don't expect to have slab side featureless uh, bulkheads and, and uh, you know the other bulkheads we've seen haven't been but this one definitely does look a bit that way. Um, I'm sure there would have been fire hoses, um, trunking um, and all sorts of bits and pieces a, a, along these edges so um, maybe the separate parts I don't know we'll, we'll have to have a look at the instructions more deeply but that bit just looked a little bit plain in comparison to the others there are hand irons on there and, and a bit of uh, trunk casing um, and then we've got wood deck here um, again I think some of these platforms look a little bit heavy um, but that that might be accurate might not I would suspect that there should be doorways there which, which are missing, but that's a guess. Um, yeah, so that's that bit done. Then we have this large moulded piece which forms the um, forward superstructure. And there's, there's quite a lot of nice um, detail on there. You've got cable runs. Um, obviously there's some structures that are going in between those that are either intermittent. There's hand rungs on there, a bit of vents. Um, yeah that looks quite nice then we've got the deck I'm fairly sure yeah so we've got the, the cross hatch deck so that's correct um, again splinter shields are, are quite nicely done but let me show you what I mean with the previous part we looked at if you put those together that goes on top of there and we take the side view the bottom bit just looks a little bit underwhelming because it just feels not right to me um, but when we've done our research we'll be able to understand that more fully. The very last bag out uh, contains these four um, slide moulded um, parts of the superstructure so I think that is the hanger there's no internal detail on there um, feels like that's something that could do with a bit of detailing one way or another but it's got um, a modicum of detail on there. Then we've got what I think is the armoured forward observation position and, and range finding, um, which has got some nice uh, rivet detail, which all looks at first glance to be fairly accurate. Um, and the doors there. And I think that's part of the rear superstructure with the vents there. It tended to be at the back of the vents. And then lastly we have uh, the enclosed bridge. Um, you can see it's fairly heavily moulded so we'll need to thin that out if we're using it or, or replace it in some way. Um, but that also has, um, I wasn't sure, I think that is a cable run, not a mould seam on the bottom there. Um, so yeah, uh, that is all the parts. Okay, so that's what you get in the box. What's my first impression? Um, there's nothing in there that's unexpected, either good or bad. If you've bought into Trumpeter's 1-200 scale ship range before, then you get in pretty much what you'd expect to get. There's nothing there that's um, out of the ordinary, if, if you like. Um, there's a lot of similarities to the Bismarck. So if you've built the Bismarck, you're going to get another ship that looks similar to the Bismarck. Obviously there are differences, it is a different ship, it's got 
uh, triple turrets rather than um, double turrets. Um, it, it more from the pocket battleship era um, and, and was built within uh, largely within the confines of the, the treaties at the time, unlike the Bismarck, it's not as heavy as the Bismarck. So it will have um, a, a different look. Um, and it comes with a different paint scheme. Uh, highlights, there's some real finesse in some of the moulding, um, particularly the splinter shields which look really, really nice. Um, there, there is some very nice detail on, on the decking and some nice texturing on, in, in some of the areas of, of the ship and, and I think building it straight out of the box it will look really, really nice. Um, low lights, there are some options I would like to have seen that they've, they've not included, um, like the aircraft having a, a folded wing uh, option would have been nice. Um, that some of the deck hatches which are moulded closed is a little bit disappointing. Um, but that's probably about it, other than the decal sheet, which always disappoints uh, and, and you always end up replacing. Um, so um, it doesn't disappoint as it, in terms of it was expected. Um, is it value for money? Uh, interesting question. When you consider um, this is around about in the UK, this is going to set you back around about £250 delivered you shouldn't be paying more than £260 all in. Now if you consider that the, against the cost of the Bismarck kit, um, it, you're probably paying um, £60 or £70 more than you would get for the Bismarck. And the Bismarck is probably fractionally larger, probably a similar parts count. Um, you are getting an older kit that perhaps doesn't have quite the finesse of this one. But then it, it did include um, a separate kit for one of the uh, main gun uh, batteries that with um, with clear parts that you could see into and all the various different layers as it went down into the ship which was nice you don't get any of that um, anymore so um, you know you pay your money you take your choice it's down to you whether whether you think it's value for money um, I think the Sean horse is an under modeled um, ship and it gets overlooked in the shadow of its two um, bigger sis, uh, sisters in, in Tirpitz and Bismarck. It wouldn't surprise me if Trump had brought out one of the Sean Hall sister ships. It's not a big leap to modify what they've already done to get um, organised now out. So uh, who knows, who knows. Um, but I think it's a nice kit in its own right. In part two we will compare it to the anatomy of the ship and see what needs to be amended, um, particularly with the hull, which they're notorious for not quite getting right, um, and what other bits might need scratch building. I'm not gonna be building this kit anytime soon. I'm gonna wait for the aftermarket boys to catch up with it and, and see what can be done. Um, so, but that's not a big worry for me because once we've finished Arizona, we've got the Bismarck to look at with three major etch sets included, um, Edward, Pontos and Mark 1 all included in that build with scale decks and then we've got the hull. So we've got plenty of big scale ships to build before we need to look at the Scharnhorst. If you like what you saw and you're interested in seeing this get built at some point in the future please subscribe um, and uh, thank you for looking in and we'll see you in part two. Mm -hmm.